imagine paying more than 11 bucks for one ear of corn, $23 for a loaf of bread, $45 for orange juice, and $15.50 for a chocolate bar. Well, our next guest says we will be seeing prices like this in the very near future. And brace yourself, because of food inflation, this holiday season will be the worst in American history. Gerard Adams is president of the National Inflation Association. Gerard, welcome to you. So we all know the macro picture with the Fed and quantitative easing, flooding dollars into the system, more dollars equal higher inflation. But you are saying food inflation will take over next year is our biggest crisis, more so than the mortgage mess, unemployment. Why is that and why aren't more people as concerned as you are? I think people do need to get educated. Um, I think that food inflation should be their number one concern right now. Um, commodities, agricultural commodities have really taken off more than anything else right in the past couple months. And um, I think that they're, come next year, it's going to get much worse. But so far, corporations have not passed on those higher food prices in a large part to the consumer. But is there going to be a floodgate? What's the catalyst going to be that that automatically comes upon our shoulders as consumers and food buyers? Well, I think it's starting to happen right now. Dean Foods actually just came out recently announcing that their net income has dropped by 51 percent because of the rising cost of their butterfat, which, you, which they use for ice cream and milk. And um, sooner or later, these companies are going to have to take on these costs. But you're talking about searing inflation here, $11.43 for one ear of corn. That's a huge differentiation for what we're paying right now. So there's got to be something major that a lot of economists are missing. We talk about core inflation, right? The Federal Reserve says core inflation is pretty limited, but when you put in the volatile food and energy component, then it gets scary. But, I mean, you're talking about prices going up for the holiday season. That could cause a run on the grocery store, so let's be really careful here. So what's the difference? What's the disconnect? I think it's really going to get bad for the holiday season, but I think it's going to get even worse coming into next year. Um, the fact of the matter is that the last time we had an inflationary crisis was in the 1970s, and we just calculated the fact that those, taking the prices that it went to in the 1970s and compared it to what the real rate of inflation is around today's dollars, and that's where we got a lot of our projections. $23 for a 24-ounce loaf of wheat bread. It's astronomical. $77 for an 11-ounce container of Folgers coffee. Give me a snapshot. Give me a better understanding of how you do your research. Well, basically, I think actually those prices can happen within the next decade, but they can even happen even sooner, in my opinion. Uh, if you, if what we did was, like I told you, uh, we just took the prices the last time we had an inflationary crisis, which, is, which was in the 1970s. Um, I feel that the economic status right now is much worse than it was in the 70s. So I took the prices of those commodities when they hit their highs in the 70s and I just uh, calculated what those prices would be in today's dollars based on the real rate of inflation. And then how does that compare to because wage growth is certainly not going to keep up with this rate of food inflation you're talking about. What's the uh, ratio there? What's the difference there? I think that uh, for every 1% in wage growth there'll be 4% food inflation. So I think it, it, people really need to start waking up. I'm Steve Shank. You're looking at this because you're concerned or interested in food. Let me tell you where this all came from. We've been involved with shipping food all over the country for about 27 years. And it came from the old pioneers. My daddy was 62 when I was born. That means he was born in 1887. And the old timers always had food. Reason? Americans are rugged individualists. They're independent. They don't need nothing from nobody. And the reason the old pioneers and the old timers always had food around is because it's our greatest dependency. And they never knew when they were going to have a crop or when they weren't. And they were ready. Hey, I'm a farm boy from Minnesota, and it's just about impossible for me, along with the rest of you, I'm sure, to believe that in America, the breadbasket of the world, it's possible to have food problems. But we do. You realize in 1959, this country could have fed the entire world five times over? Now, we're importing 30% of our food? This is scary. And right now, with the economy the way it is, over 30% of our families, when they go down to the grocery store every week, have to make a decision as to whether they're going to buy food or pay some other bills that they've got sitting on their doorstep. The stock market is up and down like a yo-yo. Nations are falling over one thing. Food is that interesting. Food has always been the issue of wars and rumors of wars. Nations have fallen because food was not there. And it's happening right now on this planet. 
we're living in fearful times. And here's a thought for you. Every single fear that we have is based on some dependency being threatened. If we didn't need our jobs, we wouldn't fear losing them. If we didn't need the credit from the bank, we wouldn't worry about whether we had it or not. If we didn't need food, we wouldn't worry about whether the farmers can afford to stay in business. Very simply, eliminate fear by being independent. The problem that we have with all of this stuff hitting us, whether it's the banks or the stock market or job loss or food prices and gas prices, is that we have been hit with so much stuff that we've become desensitized. Uh, you know how to cook a frog? It's very simple. If you take a frog and you throw him in a bucket of hot water, he's going to get right out of there. But if you take that frog and you stick him in a bucket of cold water and you put the cold water on the stove, he's going to be paddling around in that cool water just like happy as a hog in a peach orchard. But the fact is, then when you start turning up the heat, turning up the heat, he slowly, slowly gets warmer and warmer, but he's desensitized to the possibility of things getting nasty until he's cooked. Now, we've been desensitized. We've been hit from every possible direction. We've been hit with so much stuff that most of us are sitting there almost catatonic. We're frozen with just being overwhelmed with so many things coming at us that are so threatening of every dependency we have in life. Our housing, our jobs, our money, our food, everything. Please, snap the fingers in front of your own face so that you wake up and stop being desensitized because we're being cooked like frogs, guys. The important thing that needs to happen is that people need to take that dependency on food and realize that they have control. We are not victims. We are not victims of an economy, of bad government decisions. We're not victims of anything but being just good, solid Americans. What we can do is we can prepare just like the pioneers did. My friends, with our great American heritage, we have the power through choosing independence to become totally fearless.